Stephen uh, had given me or had told me about it uh, in 2007. And, uh, you know, so I knew I was going to do it because I, you know, I've done seven movies with him and or this was the seventh. And um, and I basically just work with him whenever I get a chance. And then the script came in, you know, a year later or so. And, and uh, it's really one of the best scripts I've ever read. And, and uh, Richard did such a beautiful job. Um, just getting the dynamic, you know, because I'd read Scott's book a few times at that point, and Richard really just seemed to nail a, a really interesting, interesting dynamic. Well, Behind the Candelabra is about um, the, really the relationship between uh, Liberace, who was the number one entertainer on the planet, and a young um, guy um, who became his... Uh, you know, really the love, the love of his life. Scott the, is the character that I play, the, is a young guy, and, and he, uh, you know, he was a guy who, would, you know, bounced around from uh, foster home to foster home, and he was somebody who, uh, you know, fell up, f very much fell in love with, with, uh, with the, this guy who happened to be the biggest kind of showman on earth at a time when that kind of uh, uh, relationship had to be kept secret, and, um, and, uh, and so that put an even greater pressure on their relationship, besides the kind of power imbalance and, you know, the dynamic that was specific to them. They also had the added pressure of, of, uh, of trying to live in the closet. Well, another reason I wanted to do the movie was um, I couldn't... I, I couldn't have the opportunity to play opposite Michael Douglas as Liberace and pass it up. Um, you know, I, I, I just knew that, you know, in reading the script, this was a, the, roles like this just don't come along. And the role of Scott was, was just also just wonderful. And, and, and uh, but, but also as a fan of movies, I didn't want to miss uh, having a front row seat to, to, to Michael uh, playing Liberace. You know, for Scott, it was this, you know, it was like this explosion of, you know, this this kind of over-the-top, you know. He walked into Versailles suddenly, you know, and he was a kid who really hadn't been exposed to anything like that. And so, you know, I think on top of uh, finding somebody who was who was smart and who who listened to him and, and who he listened to, and, you know, I think they, they just eventually fell, you know, pretty seriously in love and, and had some really good years together um, before, uh, before things started to spiral out of control. Well, his private life bore no resemblance at all to his public life, and, you know, and he was, but he was always petrified that, um, that, that he was going to be, you know, uh, found out as a, as a gay man. We heard that, that on the night that Scott's, the story broke about Scott, um, uh, Liberace was backstage absolutely petrified um, to come on stage because he thought he was going to get heckled and booed and, and he thought that uh, his fans weren't going to forgive him and, and, um, and, you know, they made him go out and, and he walked out and th th there was this roaring ovation for him and it was just, he realized that it was going to be okay and he was going to be okay and... Um, so, you know, um, I can't imagine how, how hard it would have been to, to live in that kind of fear. Um, I've, you know, never really worked with anybody like Steven. Um, uh, Spielberg is, is, is similar in the sense that he, um, he's cutting in camera, uh, and making, uh, decisions, um, in about as decisive a manner as, as you could ask. Um, you know, a lot of times it's one take. Um, you know, it's, 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 an, it's just an understanding of, of how things cut together. Um, and it's really the only way I could have done this movie. Um, you know, with this type of subject matter, it's, you know, it's, it's um, you know, we really wanted to get it right um, and we really wanted to do it justice. Well, Jerry's the greatest showman in Hollywood, so he was the perfect guy to uh, produce it. Um, but, but Jerry, you know, Jerry knew Liberace, 
he'd had dinner with him, you know, he'd been, you know, many times over the years and, and, uh, and, and was around Vegas at that time, you know, and, and knew, you know, he'd booked Elvis in that same, uh, room at the Hilton. And, you know, he was really, when, when they, when they returned the room to its actual, you know, the, the exact way it was back then, he came up, he said, I can't believe it. It's, it's, it looks just like it did in 77. And, um, but, uh, but but he was you know he 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 really understood the pageantry of that time he, he you know what everything looked like you know he was there for that yeah this was the first uh movie that i ever enjoyed wardrobe fittings on you know i i always just kind of you know just got through them you know i i i, I but this was um, you know, I did probably, I don't know, eight, ten wardrobe fittings, and we really got into it. It was really fun. The, the clothes were so different from anything that I'd ever put on, and they changed me so much. And, uh, and I could see they suddenly could make me stand or walk or move a different way. Like, I, I really got into it. Their relationship was really complicated. And uh, but full of love, and it was intense, and it was, it was absurd. There are moments that are just absurd, um, but it kind of, for me, just kind of made me think about the absurdity of all of our relationships, and um, and how if you put a camera on any intimate re relationship, it would probably seem a little absurd and, and intense and, and joyful and uh, tragic. <laughs> there are moments in this movie where if, if this were a marriage between a husband and a wife, you know, you'd look at it and go, ah, this is a little too intimate, maybe I shouldn't be watching this. But it's between two men, and, and I've never seen that movie, so I'm really proud to be in it.